بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النسير نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشكره ونسلي ونسلم على حبيب إله العالمين حافظ سره ومبلغ رسالته الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله لا أدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال علي عليه السلام إلهي قلبي مهجوب صلوا على محمد وآل محمد Many words have got more than one meanings. Or sometimes you'll find that even if it doesn't have several meanings, then one word, perhaps there's one word, but it, if a, it, it depends upon a person, the one who speaks, what does he speak? In what context is that word used? And sometimes you'll find that one word, it has got opposite meanings. One word, but it has got opposite meanings. Like in Arabic, the word qist. Qist, in Arabic, it means justice. At the same time, it means also injustice. So it depends upon the context, how a person is explaining. Or in English, many a times they use the word wicked. Now, if you go to English, thesaurus, wicked is evil, wrong, something bad. But at the same time, wicked is also used for something good. Yeah? So sometimes there is one word, but it is used for the opposite meaning. It is the same word. It depends upon the person, how he explains. Yeah? So again, if or you have got another word, which, is, which sometimes you have got a word like a lion, example. Lion, it, the way we explained that one word, it, it could be used in a positive way or in a negative way. It all depends upon the context, how the person is portraying his sentences. So, sometimes you'll find a lion example. In Arabic, lion, it could be used in a positive way and in a negative way. When it is used in a positive way, so it's in a good way, like we say, share khuda, yeah, which means Amirul Muminin, example, Ali alayhi salam. Yeah, he. <laughs> Or Hazrat Hamza, who was very brave. And here, these personalities, they've got these names because of their bravery. Hazrat Hamza, alayhi salam. Or Abbas, alayhi salam. Abbas means a dauntless lion. At the same time, these words, Abbas, Hamza, which means, because they are brave, that is why they got, they got these names. At the same time, our uh, Immas have used the same words yeah, for, in a negative way, yeah, for ruthless kings. For the kings who were power hunger, who wanted power, like Imam Sajjad, Imam Zainul Abidin, Ali ibn al Hussein, Salawatullahi wa Salaamu Alayhi. Example, he says that he compares people to different kinds, to different groups, based on their characters. Yeah? So, example, he says the ruthless kings, because of their actions, they don't like to be told. They just want to rule. Wahum uh, muluk dunya, Imam Sajjad says. And these are the kings of the worlds. Or kings, they are the kings, the ruthless rulers, the oppressors. They just want to oppress. They are selfish. They don't think of others. They don't consider of others. These are ruthless kings. Thus, Imam Sajjad says, they are like lions. So here, lion is used in a negative way for the ruthless kings, for the oppressors. So again, or then, it's a long narration. 
Yeah, like Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says that uh, people are compared to wolves and those are the business people, businessmen uh, who speak lie because of their profit. When they want to buy, they speak lie. Uh, and when they, when they want to bargain also, it is in their benefit, they will lie. Or example, then Imam Sajjad says that there are people, there are some people that are compared to fox because they want to earn in the name of religion. And there are some people, they are like dogs because their tongues are very dangerous. They are very harsh in speaking. They don't think of others. They are like dogs. Then Imam Sajjad continues, there are some people, they are like pigs. He says they are, they are shameless like pigs. And then all this, he uses negative examples. He compares people to negative examples. Then he says, but there is one group which is good and they are compared to sheep. Yeah, because sheep is beneficial to the, to the people. Yeah, the sheep's skin is leather. The sheep's milk is beneficial to the people. Sheep's flesh, meat, is beneficial to the people. Mu'min, a believer, is also beneficial to whole community. Thus, a, mu a, a mu'min is compared, a believer is compared to a sheep. So sometimes, a word can be used in a negative way, in a positive way. It all depends upon the context. How do you portray? So lion also, it, 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 is, it is used in a positive way and in a negative way. So same applies to hijab, veil even. Again, if we say hijab, veil, hijab will be translated in English as veil. It is something good, isn't it? It is used in a good way. Our masums have used hijab in a good way. And, and it is a shari masail that for female, balke hijab is not only for female, hijab is also for us. When we, when we lower our gazes, we males, we lower our gazes, this is our hijab, according to Quran. Quran says, when you see a namahram, you lower your gaze. Now perhaps in English culture, when you see an opposite sex, you, it's rude perhaps to lower your gaze, yeah? But normally for us, because haya, it, it is in, in, in a person's eyes. How can you know a person's haya? A person's shamefulness and modesty, chastity. How will you know to what extent that this person has got chastity? At the, when, you person, when you talk with a namahram for a long time, then a time comes, a person lowers his gaze because he's scared that he should not fall into guna. He should not fall into a sin. Yeah? So th this is the hijab of a man. This is a veil of a man. Hijab means a covering is a curtain, yeah, and, and hijab, veil is something very good. Whatever, I always say this, that whatever Islam has kept, it is for our own good. If Islam has made wajib, it is for our own good. If hijab would have not been there, then just think of a community. Uh, what would have happened to our society, isn't it? So hijab is kept for our own good. That is why it is wajib for female. And it is said that when, when female, when they apply cosmetics, then they have to cover their whole face. If the cosmetics is not applied, then they can leave their faces open. This is, this is shari masala. And hijab is kept in Islam because our female are precious to us. Just now, if you have got something very valuable, very precious, will you keep it on the road? Uh, will you expose it so, so that everybody should look at it? No. You will keep, you will conceal it. You will keep it in a safe place. You will protect it. Our women, our namus, the word used in Sharia is namus, our women. For us, uh, they are very precious to us. And this is a courage of a man. This is, it, this is bravery of a man. It is modesty and chastity of a man that when he doesn't want even his, his, his family, his wife or his mother, his sister's faces to be exposed in Facebook with cosmetics. This is his courage. This is his modesty. This is his haya. This is his ghayrat. This is called bravery. This is his ghayrat. That I, I, I don't accept, I don't agree that my, my women folk to be exposed in the Facebook because all other men should look at them. I wouldn't agree that. This is ghayrat. This is called ghayrat. So veil is wajib. And that is why it is kept in Islam. Now again, hijab is used in a good purpose, in a positive way. Again, hijab is used in a negative way. Like Amirul Muminin says in Dua'i, Sabah, 
ilahi qalbi mahjub the same hijab hijab is a barrier and hijab when see quran has used the word the word jilbab which means something which which doesn't show the contour of a woman of a woman of a female because when a man sees a contour of a female he gets attracted towards that woman hijab means jilbab quran has mentioned jilbab in surah ahzab jilbab yani her her shape should not be seen her shape should not be seen and that is why you you know imagine sayyida alayha salam bibi fatima alayha salam <coughs> She says to Asma bint Umais, you know, the, you must have heard this tradition in the, uh, before or in the past. I must have mentioned it, but I'll just speak it quickly. That in, in olden times, they wouldn't have a coffin. They would just carry the corpse uh, open and they would just cover in a shroud and they would take the, that, uh, they would take the corpse and they would bury it. Bibi Fatima alayha salam, when she, when Asma bin Tawmais came back from Abyssinia, from Ethiopia, and she said to Bibi Sayyid alayhi salam that, oh holy lady, I have seen in Abyssinia that when they take the corpse, the coffin, they cover the coffin. So Bibi Fatima alayhi salam says to Asma, then make for me a coffin. And Asma bin Tawmais made a coffin for Bibi Sayyid alayhi salam. And Bibi Sayyid alayhi salam's coffin was the first coffin in Islam in history that it was completely covered in the past they, they would just they would just carry a corpse in a in a stretcher but bibi sayyada according to the command of bibi sayyada alayhi salam asma bint umais made a coffin a covered coffin see bibi zahra alayhi salam is not accepting even while she has passed away that her body should be exposed she's already passed away but she says that no i don't want my body my the contour of my body to be seen I don't want the contour of my body to be exposed. No wonder, perhaps that, is, that could be the reason that in Qabristan also, if a mu'mina passes away, we cover her body while reciting talqeen. Yeah? See, Islam has not left you even in Qabristan when you have passed away. Islam is with you even if you go to the washroom. The Sharia and the rules and regulations of Islam follows there also, in the washroom also. See, now hijab is used in a, neg in a, in a negative way also. The way Ali alayhi salam uses in Dua Sabah. It's a, such a beautiful dua after Namaz al-Subh to be recited. And this part of Dua, it starts, Amir al says that go to sujood and then recite in sajda. Ilahi qalbi mahjub. Oh Allah. Now, hijab means a barrier, some, a cover, a curtain. This is called hijab, isn't it? We draw a curtain at night. In, on our windows, so that so somebody should not see inside our rooms. We protect ourselves. This is our privacy, isn't it? So women also need to have privacy. Now this is a good, this is a positive way, but a negative way. Our sins act as a hijab. Our sins also in our hearts become a hijab. That is why Amirul Mu'minin says in this dua, "Ilahi qalbi mahjub." Oh Lord, what should I tell about myself? How shall I narrate about, about myself, my situation, my spiritual situation, O oh Allah? My heart, has, become, my heart has, has, a, has a layer. My heart has a layer. It is, it's already in hijab. It is in a, in a curtain. My, 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 my heart, it is in a veil. It is in a chadar. It is in a hijab. And, and what is that hijab? Though that hijab is sins. Our sins act as a veil. According to Amirul Mu'minin, our sins act as a veil. And it is so dangerous, you know, that when the sins become a lot, when it accumulates, according to our fifth holy Imam, when a person commits a sin, a black dot appears on his heart. Then, if he does not perform istighfar, another dot appears. At the end, the way we say this physical heart also gets heart attack. Spiritually, when the whole heart becomes dark, then it is a heart attack of our hearts, spiritually. That is extremely dangerous. That is why Ali alayhi salam says, Ilahi qalbi mahjub. Oh Allah, my heart, it is already covered. It is covered out of sins. It is covered out of disobedience. Please recite a salawat.
And that is why we are told that never consider any sin as a trivial sin, as, as an insignificant sin. This itself, considering it as a trivial sin, itself is gunahe kabira. A person thinks that this is a small sin. Considering that, that is gunahe kabira. Amirul Muin says in Lajwa Laka. You know, you think that oh, there's no problem. Let me, let, let me commit today. Umar Asad thought the same. That let me kill Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam, then we'll, we'll ask forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thinking that he committed a major sin. Amirul Muin says in Lajwa Laka that thinking, considering a small sin as a, a sin, as a trivial, as a small sin, this is gunahe kabira. Amirul Mu'minin says. Then Ali alayhi salam says, do not think that uh, it is a small sin. Think, whom are you disobeying? Whom are you disobeying? Na farmani, are you doing to whom? Uh, it is said that in the time of Harun Rashid, uh, there was a person known as Abdullah bin Bazaz. He says, I was a friend of, of one of the uh, employee of Harun Rashid. And I was very close to him. His name was Hamid bin Kohtaba. I went to visit him. It was the holy month of Ramadan. And when I, w it was lunchtime, it was meal time in the afternoon, I went to visit him. And a sufra was laid, food was laid uh, uh, at his presence, at his disposal. And he was eating and he welcomed me. So I told him, oh friend, oh chief, he said, because he was the employee of Harun Rashid. He said that I am fasting, it is the holy month of Ramadan, it is the daytime. I am not exempted from fasting, neither am I sick, nor am I a traveler. I don't have any genuine reason, so I can't escape fasting, I am fasting. He says, when I told him that I am fasting, he continued eating. After eating, he came to me in a living room. He sat with me, then he told me that, do you know why am I not fasting? He says, why? He says, I have despaired, I have despaired from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've despaired from the mercy of Allah. He says, why have you despaired? According to Quran, Quran says, La yayasu min ruh, min rawhillah. Quran says, do not despair from rahmatillah. La tayas min rahmatillah. Do not despair from rahmah of Allah. He says, I've despaired from rahmah of Allah because I am the employee of Harun Rashid. Once in the middle of the night, he called me, he summoned me, and I went to visit him. He says, to what extent, uh, to what measure do you obey me? I told him that I can sacrifice my life and my wealth. He says, Harun lowered his head. His head said, fine. He permitted me. After a while, again he called me. To what measure can you sacrifice yourself for me? He says, I can sacrifice my wealth, my family, my wealth, uh, my wealth, my life, and my family, my wife and my children. Harun became happy, he permitted him. Third time, Harun Rashid, the Abbasid king, he called him, he says, to what extent, to what measure do you, are you ready to sacrifice for me? He says, I am ready to sacrifice my wealth, my life, my family, and my religion. The time he said, I am ready to sacrifice my religion, Harun told him, then if you are ready to sacrifice your religion, then go with this slave of mine, with this servant of mine. He says, I was taken with the, with the servant and I went to a big courtyard. There was a house, the house was open, there was a big courtyard. In the middle of the court, there was a well and there were three rooms. In every room, there were 20 sadat. And then every room was opened, I was told to kill every sadat, every sayyid. And I went on killing, I went on killing the sayyids until the 60th sayyid. I, I killed 59 Sayyid. And when I reached the 60th Sayyid, I wanted to kill him. He was an old person, overgrown, with big hair. He told me that just think how much sins you have committed. Thinking that is a small sin, I'll ask forgiveness. Just think what will you respond to our grandfather Rasulullah on the day of judgment when you stand before him, that you are going on spilling our blood. He says, the slave command, and I was, I was, when he told me this, I started trembling, I started shivering, but the slave told me, kill him, and I killed him, and his body was also thrown in the well. Sixty sadats were killed, and all the sadats were thrown in the well, in the middle of the courtyard. But now this, he says, since I killed sixty sadat, I left praying, I left fasting. But now I would say that this is not a good reason for a person to argue 
uh, or to defend himself that I won't fast now because I've committed so much sins. Be remember in the time of our, if of our seventh holy mom, when the seventh holy mom was asked that with, uh, uh, by Mu'tasim that Ibn Rasulullah, there is a command and we have caught a thief and we want to, we want to apply this hukm on him. How, where shall we chop off his hands? The seventh holy imam said that chop, chop only his fingers because he has still to pray. And for praying, he will have to touch his, the ground. His palms need to touch the ground. Thus, he'll have, he still have to pray. So just chop off his fingers. So he was a thief, but still he was told to pray by the seventh holy imam. Thus, this was not a good reason. Many people, uh, they, they, will, they will defend themselves. They'll bring false argument, what we call tawji. They, they bring false argument, but uh, as this person brought his argument, that since we killed, I killed so many people, now I'm not fasting. This is not right. Balke Quran says, La tay asmin rahmatillah. Or Nabi Yaqub alayhi salam said to his son, Yusuf alayhi salam. What did he say to his son? He said to his sons, that when you go, in verse number 87 of Surah Yusuf, La yay asu min rawhillah, illa al qawmul kafirin. Do, know that do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only the unbelieving people despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or Musa se bhi aise hi kaha gaya tha. Musa jab kohe tur pe gaye the, to ek martaba Musa ne, Musa ne Allah se Allah ko pukara. Or Musa kehne lagi, ya Allah, to khuda vande karim ne kaha labbeik. Phir Musa ne kaha, ya Rahman, Khuda Vande Karim ne kaha, labbeik. Phir Musa ne kaha, ya Rahim, Allah ne kaha, labbeik. Lekin jab Musa ne kaha, ya ilah al-asin. Yani e gunah gharo ke khuda. To Khuda Vande Karim ne kaha, ya labbeik, 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 ya Musa. Musa ko taajjub hua. Ke palne wale Musa ne sawal kiya. Hum bhi hote Musa ki jagah pe. To hume bhi taajjub hota. Musa ne poochha, ya Allah. Jab meinne, ya Allah pukara, ya Rahman pukara, ya Rahim pukara. تو تم نے فقط ایک مرتبہ لبیک کہا لیکن جب میں نے کہا یا الہ الاحسین یعنی ایک گنہگاروں کے خدا تو تم نے تین مرتبہ کہا کہ لبیک 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 تو خدا نے کہا اے موسیٰ ایک تقوی انسان اپنے تقوی کے اوپر اتقا کرتا ہے تقیہ رکھتا ہے ریلائی کرتا ہے اپنے تقوی کے اوپر ایک زاہد انسان اپنے زہد پر تقیہ کرتا ہے ریلائی کرتا ہے اپنے زہد پر لیکن میرے گنہگار بندے کے پاس کوئی نہیں ہے فقط میں ہوں اسی لئے گناہ بھی ایک بڑا گناہ ہے ایک بڑا جرم ہے کہ انسان اللہ کی رحمت سے مایوس بنے لا تئی عصم رحمت اللہ قل یا عبادی اللہ دینہ ظلم انفسکم قرآن بھی کہتا ہے سورہ زمر میں جو جس نے ظلم کیا اپنے نفس پر اے محمد کہے ان سے کہ خدا کی رحمت سے وہ مایوس نہ ہے خدا وند کریم سب گناہ کو معاف کرے گا تو ہم آج کی مجلس کا میسج یہ ہے کہ انسان خدا کے رحمت سے مایوس نہ رہے خدا کی رحمت سے مایوس بننا ایک گناہ کبیرہ ایک میجر سین ہے بڑا گناہ ہے انسان کبھی بھی نہ کہے کہ میں خدا کی رحمت سے مایوس ہو چکا ہوں محترم سامین جب پردے کی بات آتی ہے تو ایک بی بی ضرور ان کا تذکرہ ضرور میرے خیال سے میرے مطابق اس بی بی کا ذکر کرنا بہت ضروری ہے جیسے کہتے ہیں اشعار میں کہا جاتا ہے جب بات آئے گی پردے کی تو یاد آئے گی زینب جب پردے کی بات آتی ہے چادر کی بات آتی ہے تو زینب ضرور یاد آئے گی ہر جگہ جب آپ کی بچی بھی جوان ہوتی ہے جب پردے کی بات آتی ہے جب آپ ان کو حجاب پہنائیں گے تو زینب ضرور یاد آئے گی وہ ایک ایسی بی بی ہے جس نے وہ پردے کی محافظہ تھی چادر کی محافظہ تھی قیامت تک ان کا نام رہے گا انہوں نے چادر کو بچایا ہے ان کا چادر تو چھینا گیا لیکن قیامت تک انہوں نے چادر کا نام رکھا ہے قیامت تک دشمن کے قصر پر دشمن کے حویلی پر ننگے سر انہوں نے خطبے کو پڑھا لیکن دین کو بچایا حازہ دارو حازہ دارو کہتے ہیں کہ اصحاب رسول کے کہتے ہیں کہ اس بی بی کا سایہ بھی ہم نے کبھی بھی نہیں دیکھا جابر ابن عبداللہ انساری کہتے ہیں کہ ہم رسول کے پاس رہتے تھے مدینہ منورہ میں لیکن کبھی بھی زینب کا سایہ بھی ہم نے نہیں دیکھا میں کہوں گا اے جابر 
लोग जरा कूफा में शाम में देखो न फकत जैनब बरहना है जैनब सर बरहना है न फकत जैनब बेमक न चादर है लेकिन जैनब के हाथ पुश्ते सर बांधा गया हाजादा रो मैं कहूंगा जाबिर आइए कूफा में बल्कि जाबिर तो एक तरफ जैनब को वो जमाना याद नहीं आता होगा कि जब वो एक जमाना था जब अली जब अली जब अली की खिलाफत का वक्त था चार साल और नौ महीने इमाम अली सलाम मुसलमानों के दरमियान खलीफा रह चुके थे उस वक्त बाजार वाले ताजिर वाले सब अपने बाजारों को बंद किया करते थे क्योंकि अली की बेटी जैनब गुजरती है लेकिन सन इकसठ हिजरा में जब हुसैन को शहीद किया गया जब जैनब को कोफा में लाया गया वही कोफा था वही शाम था उस वक्त भी जैन उस वक्त यही जैनब थी लेकिन आज जैनब के हाथ पुश्ते उनके पुष्ट पर बांधा गया बेमक चादर जैनब को लाया गया यहां तक के जैनब ने अपने चेहरे को बालों से छुपाया इसीलिए जब उम्म हबीबा से गुफ्तु करती थी उम्म हबीबा ने जैनब को नहीं पहचाना उम्म हबीबा तो थी क्या उम्म हबीबा ने जैनब से कहा के मदीना जाना चाहती हूँ ताकि मेरे स, मेरे सैयद आका की जियारत करूँ जैनब की जियारत करूँ जैनब ने कहा आया तुम जैनब को देखोगी तो पहचानोगी कहा क्यों नहीं मैंने जैनब की खिदमत की है एक साल तक मदीने में बस ये सुनना था जैनब ने अपने 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 चेहरे से बालों को हटाया ए उम्म हबीबा तुमने कहा जैनब को पहचाना ये जैनब तुम सामने खड़ी है ये सर जो तुम नो के नेजे पे देखती हो ये तुम्हारे सैयद आका का सर हुसैन इबन अली का सर है जिन मरहुमिन के लिए मजलिस मुनद की गई है उन मरहुमिन के लिए एक सुर फातहा पढ़ने की गुजारिश है अलफातहा من الشيطان الى الرجيم